take your Bible, please, this morning. Turn with me in the New Testament to the book of Acts, chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And now our text is going to be verses 9 through 17. And I'd like to ask uh, Brother Clark if he would read those verses in Korean. Those of us who are reading in English uh, can follow along as best we can while he reads those verses in Korean. 이튿날 그가 그들이 베이티를 가져가 도시에 가까이 갔을 때 베드로는 기도하려고 연습시장 집중에 올라갑니다. 그가 매우 시장 안에 먹고자 했으나 그들이 준비할 때 무기 상태에 빠져 한 개의 열심히 마치 뇌의 기충이 흐르는 큰 도자기 같은 뜻을 하나 자기의 내용을 보니 그것이 땅으로 내려가. 그 안에는 땅에 있는 온갖 내가장 기준과 기준과 기준 것들과 공중에 날진 뒤에 있더라. 또한 인성이 그리 나서 베드로야 일어나 잡아먹어 하는 거야. 베드로가 이때 주여 구할 수 없나요. 내가 폭대거나 부정한 것을 결코 먹지 않아야 하나 하네. 그 운전이 다시 두 번째 되게 말하되 <웃음> 하나님께서 깨끗하게 하신 것을 내가 속대도 하지 말라 하더라. 그 일이 세번 있은 뒤에 그 글씨 다시 하늘로 올라가 올려지더라. 이에 베드로가 자기가 보니 환상이 무릎 비슷한 지 속으로 궁금해할 때 보라 고넬료가 보는 사람들이 시몬의 집에, 집을 물어보고 그 앞에 와서 물론 베드로가 가는 시몬이 거기에 묻고 있는지 묻더라. Well, I, I love the book of Acts. And it has so many wonderful accounts of the grace of God changing people's lives. Now, we've been studying and looking at Acts chapter 10 for a few weeks now, and we're probably going to need a few more weeks in order to adequately cover the important truths that we find in this chapter. But something that we have seen repeatedly in this book is people being changed. I wonder, can you recall what changes took place in your life after you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? 여러분 여러분이 그 예수님께서 여러분 구원자로 받으신 아니 이후에 여러분의 삶에서 어떤 변화가 있었는지 기억하고 계십니까? Can you point definitively to some specific ways that the grace of God brought change in your life after you got saved? 아니면 여러분 하나님의 은혜가 여러분 안에서 변화를 일으킨 방법이 구체적으로 무엇이었는지 혹시 기억하고 계십니까? We should all be able to do that, even if we were saved at a very young age. You know, I can't help but worry about those who claim to have been saved, but don't seem to be any different than they were before they were saved. 저는 사람들이 자기가 구원받다 얘기하지만 구원 전이나 구원 후에 아무런 삶의 변화가 없을 경우에 좀 걱정스럽고 합니다. I worry about them because Scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away uh, and become new. And thus, if someone cannot determine any way in which he's been changed, then it could be because that person was never truly saved. I remember a certain lady telling me some years ago that she left a good church because the pastor's sermons always made her doubt her salvation. I had heard that pastor preach quite a few sermons. In fact, I none of the sermons I heard him preach ever made me doubt my salvation. You know, I honestly never heard any sermon. That made me doubt my salvation. But then I can tell you how I became a new creature in Christ when I was only seven years old. You know, as a pastor, I'd rather cause some Christian to doubt their salvation than to cause a lost person to trust in something that cannot save them. 사실 구원받지 않은 사람들이 잘못된 걸 가지고 구원을 믿는 것을 믿는 것을 우리가 고칠 필요가 있습니다. I would not want anyone here to trust in something that is not the gospel. 저는 어느 누구도 복음이 아닌 걸 믿는 걸 원치 않기 때문입니다. And that's exactly what God did to Peter 
here in our text. God shook Peter's world. God forced Peter to reconsider some of what he had been trusting in. And some of the things that Peter had scrupulously observed all of his life were a false gospel in the sense that they could not save anyone. <laughs> so strong were Peter's convictions about these things that he had begun equating them with salvation. Now it's never wise to add or to take away from the words of Scripture. But sometimes we do this by equating our opinions and our preferences with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And our text today is a strong condemnation of exalting anything to the status of Scripture that has not been spoken by God. Now, I'm certainly not going to try to tear down every false idea that men dearly love, but our, but our text does speak about three things that plague the faith of many professing Christians. So I ask for your careful attention to see what God's Word shows us is not part of the Gospel message. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on our on our sermon today. Lord, we love you and thank you for the opportunity we have to, get, to come together and to worship you, to lift up our voices in both song and prayer and the reading of your word. And uh, Lord, I do pray the Holy Spirit would now be our teacher. Help me as I preach. Fill me, and Brother Park, with the power of the Spirit of God as we bring forth this message. May it help everyone here, some perhaps to the salvation that they may need, and others, Lord, to become a better Christian and closer into the image of our Lord and Savior. May you be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's look again at verses 9 and 10 of our text. Verses 9 and 10 say, On the morrow as they went on their journey and drew nigh into the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten but... While they made ready, he fell into a trance. Something that is surely equated with salvation by many people are powerful feelings. In our text, Peter went up to the rooftop to pray. And while he was up there praying, he experienced some powerful feelings. Now, I would not accuse Peter of being guilty of mistaking his powerful feelings of hunger for the gospel of salvation. Nevertheless, it's still a very common error these days. There are many professing Christian people that have had powerful personal experiences or feelings. And to them, those feelings are beyond questioning. Again, I wouldn't say that it may not be a feeling of hunger that people put great faith in. But our feelings, no matter what we consider their source to be, are never trustworthy things. Feelings and emotions arise from our hearts, which the Bible says are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. 
사실 성경에서 뭐라고 말씀하면 우리 마음속이라는 감정과 감정과 느낌 그 자체들은 그걸 사실 어떤 때는 굉장히 사악한 것이다라고 말하고 있습니다. Many years ago, I once spoke to a man who attended a certain charismatic church. I spoke to him about salvation. 저는 옛날에 그 카리스마 교회에 대한 카리스마 교회에 다녔던 분과 구원에 대해 얘기하고 있습니다. And as I was speaking to him, I quoted several Bible verses that speak about salvation. After I said those verses to him, he looked at me with a smile on his face and said, I don't really care what the Bible says. I know what I experienced. 그분이 그, 그, 그런 말씀을 듣고 저에게 뭐라고 하셨냐면 저는 성경에 뭐라고 쓰여있는지 관심이 없습니다. 왜냐하면 저는 제가 경험한 것이 더 중요하기 때문입니다. 이렇게 얘기했습니다. As far as he was concerned, his personal experience and feelings trumped anything that the Bible said. 그분이 말씀하신 것은 자기가 느낀 경험이 성경보다 더 의미 있다는 것입니다. So his final authority was not thus saith the Lord. 그 말씀은 자, 그분에 있어서 가장 최종적인 권위는 성경이 아니라는 것입니다. He made his own feelings the lamp unto his feet and the light unto his path. 그분 자신의 감정을 가장 중요한 사실 최종 보기로 느끼는 것입니다. Dear friends, I pray that you will not fall prey to that error. 여러분, 제 성도 여러분, 저는 여러분이 그런 실수를 하시지 않길 바랍니다. Never exalt your feelings or your personal experiences above the authority of the Word of God. 여러분의 감정이나 경험이 주님의 말씀보다 위에 있으면 안 됩니다. Our feelings are not the gospel. I hope that you were filled with joy when you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I think that anyone who realizes that they're a lost sinner on their way to an eternity in hellfire <laughs> would be overwhelmed with gladness when they cried out to Christ to save them from their sin debt. But I can testify to you that I did not experience any noticeable emotions the day that I got saved. All there was was a certain amount of relief, but that's really about all that I felt. The Bible does not promise that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord ecstatically shall be saved. <laughs> no powerful feelings are mentioned as having any part in our salvation. God's grace received through faith in Jesus' atoning work on the cross is the only thing that can save a lost sinner. 이러버린 주인을 구원할 수 있는 유일한 방법은 주님이 십자가에서 대속하신 것을 믿는 방법밖에 없습니다. And that faith is not dependent on powerful feelings. 그런 믿음은 감정과 상관없는 것입니다. Powerful feelings may accompany our saving faith, but they are not part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 우리가 구원에 대한 믿음을 할때 그런 감정이 있을 수는 있습니다. 하지만 그런 감정이 우리의 복음과는 아무런 관련이 없다는 것을 잊지 마십시오. Now there's a second thing in our text that we must realize is not the gospel. Let's read verses 11 through 14. And uh, Peter saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet net at four corners and let down to the earth where were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. 하늘이 열리며 마치 네 귀퉁이를 맨큰 보좌 같은 그릇 하나가 자기에게 내려온 것을 보니 그것이 땅으로 내려오더라. 그 안에는 땅에 있는 온갖 네발 가진 짐승들과 불집과 기린 것들과 공중의 날짐들이 있더라. 또 하는 분이 그에게 나서 베드로가 일어나 잡아 먹으라 하거늘 베드로가 이르되 주여 그할 수 없나이다. 내가 속되거나 부정한 것을 결코 먹지 아니하였나이다. 아멘. Eating a diet of particular foods is not any part of the gospel of salvation. Now, the first thing, powerful feelings, was probably not as much of an issue with Peter as it is for some today. Be certain that this second thing, particular foods, definitely is. 
오늘날 오늘 그첫 번째 우리가 말씀드렸던 어떤 강한 감정이 구원과 상관 없다고 생각하시는 분들 중에는 이게 두 번째 어떤 음식과 관계되는 것들이 관계되는 분들도 있습니다. Yeah, at different times in Christian history, there have been movements and false teachers that attempted to equate salvation with the deeds of the law, particularly the Jewish dietary regulations. 그 그리스도의 역사를 보면, 그리스도의 역사를 보면 여러 시대에 있어서 구원을 율법의 행위가 동일시하는 만, 그래서 결국 유대교에서 말하는 특정한 음식을 먹음으로써 그걸 통해서 구원 받으려고 하는 그런 거짓 교사들이 많았습니다. Jews were forbidden in the Old Testament dispensation from the days of Moses to eat any animal that did not both have a cloven hoof and that did not chew the cud. 유대인들이 율법에서는 구약 시대 이후로 모세 시대부터 갈라디 발굽이 없고 되새김질하는 동물을 먹는 것이 금지되었습니다. And thus those Jews could not eat a pig because though the pig has a cloven hoof they do not chew the cup. 그래서 그런 일부에 따라 유대인들은 돼지고기를 먹을 수 없었는데 왜냐하면 돼지들은 발굽은 갈라졌지만 돼지김질을 하지 않기 때문에. Also they could not eat a horse because even though a horse chews the cup they do not have cloven hooves. 똑같은 이유로 유대인들은 말도 먹을 수 없었는데 왜냐하면 말은 돼지김질을 하지만 말굽이 갈라지 발굽이 갈라지 않았기 때문에. As I said at various times in history false teachers began to equate what people ate with their salvation. And that's the case of movements like the Seventh Day Adventists. You'll find that most people in the Seventh Day Adventist Church are strict vegetarians. And they not only insist on the need for modern day Gentile believers to keep the Jewish dietary regulations, in fact, they go well beyond what God's Word expected ancient Jews to practice and keep. In the Apostolic Age, there were Jews that followed the Apostle Paul around. And after the Apostle Paul would leave one place and then go and take the saving gospel message to another place, those Jews would enter into the new Gentile churches and teach new converts that it was needful for them to keep the law in order to stay saved. 그도 봐 우리 여러 그 구원을 한 장절 동안 구원의 일은 복음의 메시지를 주면서 다른 곳으로 떠나게 됐을 때그 남아 있었던 그 유대인들 그리스도인들은 이방인들에게 새로운 이방인들에게 회심 회심자들에게 구원을 유지하기 위해서는 유대인의 율법을 지켜야 된다 이렇게 얘기하고 있습니다. And they caused great confusion in the churches, and they led many new believers astray from the simple gospel of grace by faith. 바로 그런 것 때문에 많은 혼란이 일어나게 됐고 그래서 많은 애들이 믿음에 의해서 은혜를 받 믿음에 의한 은혜로서 구원받는다는 단순 복음을 잃어버리게 되었습니다. The New Testament epistle of Colossians was written largely to correct the errors of these Judaizers. 고로데서는 바로 이런 유대교적인 오류를 벗는다는 사람들을 고치기 위해서 쓰여진 책입니다. The Apostle Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, denounced all attempts to circumvent grace by keeping the Old Testament law. 사도 바울은 성령님의 감동함을 통해서 구약의 율법으로서 은혜를 피해가려고 하는 어떤 시도도 더다 부정했습니다. Keep your place in Acts 10, but but look in and see Colossians 2 verses 20 through 22. 사도 바울은 고린도서 2장 20절에서 20절 어떻게 쓰는지 살펴보시겠습니다. Colossians chapter 2 verses 20 to 22. The Bible says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, are ye subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men? 그러면 너희가 세상에 유치한 원리들로부터 나 그리스도와 함께 죽었건 어찌하여 세상에 살고 있는 것 같이 규례들에 복종하느냐? 곧 만지지도 않고 말 나쁘지도 않고 소를 내지도 않는 말라 하는 것이니 이 모든 것은 사용하는 대로 없어질 것이요 사람들의 명령과 교리를 따른 것입니다. Now let's be clear. Paul was not saying that grace is a license to violate the Old Testament laws. 다시 말씀드리지만 사도 바울은 은혜가 구약의 율법을 어길 수 있는 그런 일종의 허가증 같은 것이다 이렇게 얘기하는 것이 아닙니다. But what Paul was saying is that we need not be subject to temporary laws that are now passed away and that never could save those who kept them anyway. 사도 바울이 얘기하는 것은 이제 우리 은혜의 시대에는 그 율법을 통해서 구원받는 것이 아니니까 율법을 우리가 복종할 필요가 없다라고 얘기하는 것뿐입니다. 
In the book of Galatians, Paul also took to task those who wanted to add things to the simple faith for salvation. Look in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. 오, 그 어리석도다 가라도의 사람들아 내일은 예수께서 십자가에 못 박혀도 못 박힌 분 너희 가운데 너희 눈앞에서 분명히 제시되었거늘 누가 너희를 꾀어 너희가 진리에 순종하지 못하게 하더냐 내가 너희에게 다만 이것을 알고자 하느라 너희가 율법을 행위로 성령을 받느냐 믿음에 관하여 율법을 들음으로 받느냐 Those who refuse to eat certain foods will say they received God's Spirit by their keeping of the food regulations of the Bible 특정한 율법에 따른 특정한 음식을 거부함으로써 거부하는 사람들은 자신들이 하나님의 성령님을 그렇게 율법에 따른 식단을 지키고 받았다라고 얘기하는 것입니다. But God and Paul both say not so. 하지만 하나님과서도 바울 모두 다 두분 다 그렇지 않다고 얘기하고 있어요. Thrice, three times, Peter argued to God that he would not eat what God offered him. 오늘 오늘 보면서 사도 베드로는 세 번이나 하나님께서 주신 것을 자기는 먹지 않겠다라고 얘기하고 있습니다. My friends, that's problem. It's also a doctrine of devils. Look in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 1 through 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. 이제 성령께서 분명히 말씀하실 있기를 마지막 때 어떤 사람이 믿음에서 떠나 유혹하는 영혼들과 마귀들의 교리에 주의를 기울이는 것이 이들은 위선으로 거짓말을 하여 자기 양심을 뜨거운 만, 인두로 지진 않느냐 이들이 혼인을 금하고 음식물을 상달하고 명령할 터이나 음식물을 하나님께서 창조하다 진리를 믿고 아는 자들이 감사함으로 받게 하느니라 하나님의 모든 창조물을 선하고 감사함으로 받으면 거부할 것이 하나도 없나니 My friends pay no attention to those who try to make particular foods part of the gospel message. 성도들은 특정한 음식을 만들 먹는 것으로서 복을 구원을 받을 수 있다고 얘기하는 그런 분들을 주목하 그런 분들을 주의하시오. Now let me conclude with one final thing our text shows us is not the gospel. 마지막으로 제가 그 오늘 본문을 말씀드리고 여러분 복음이 복음이 아닌 분이 말씀을 말씀드리겠습니다. Let's read verses 15 through 20. 15절부터 20절. 15절부터 20절. Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 15, and the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And he called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. 그 분이 다시 두 번째 그에게 말하되 하나님께서 뜻하게 하신 것을 네가 속되다 하지 말라 하더라. 이 일이 세번 있으되 그 일이 다시 하늘로 올라갔다 올려지더라. 이제 베드로가 자기가 보니 환상이 무엇을 뜻하는지 속으로 궁금했는데 그가 보내려고 하는 사람들이 시몬의 집으로 물어보고 문 앞에 서서 물론 베드로 안에 시몬이 여기 있냐 묻고 있는 한 베드로가 그 환상에 대하여 생각할 때 성령께서 그에게 이르시되 보라 사람이 너를 찾으니 그러므로 너는 일어나 내려가서 아무것도 의심하지 말고 그들과 함께 가라 내가 그들을 보내느니라 하시네. Without question, prejudicial fellowship has not a thing to do with the Christian faith or the gospel of Christ. I don't think that it's much of a surprise that people who would make the error of equating feelings and food with salvation might also engage in 
prejudicial fellowship. 저는 우리 감정이라든지 음식 같은 거를 구원과 동일시하는 사람들이라면 또한 이렇게 그 교제를 할 때도 자기들이 원하는 특정 사람들만 교제할 거라고 생각합니다. Even the <웃음> apostle Peter struggled to overcome his ethnic prejudice. 심지어 사도 베드로 말도 이렇게 인종적인 편견을 극복하기 어려워했습니다. Notice what Peter said when he arrived at the home of Cornelius in verse 28 of this chapter. 오늘 그 28절에서 베드로가 고넬료의 집에 도착했을 때 어떤 말을 했는지 한번 주목하신 거나. Verse 28 says, and he said unto them, "Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto the home uh, uh, unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common." or unclean. Now we know from the book of Galatians that Peter would not keep to his own preaching about this matter. Some years later, the Apostle Paul was forced to publicly rebuke Peter in Galatians chapter 2. 그렇기 때문에 그가 오는 갈라디아에서 몇년 뒤에 2장 갈라디아서 2장 11절과 21절에서 공개적으로 베드로를 책망할 수밖에 없었습니다. Please turn with me there to Galatians chapter 2. 갈라디아서 2장을 한번 보시겠습니다. I'd like to read several verses. 갈라디아 2장을 2장에 몇 구절 읽도록 하겠습니다. We're going to read verses 11 through 21. 11절부터 21절까지. Galatians 2 beginning at verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews, who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also are found sinners, it is therefore, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For the, through, I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. If, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. <laughs> You understand what we've just read there in Galatians? Peter was happily fellowshipping with the Gentile believers in the church at Antioch of Syria. 
But then certain Jewish brethren from Jerusalem arrived. And at that point, Peter withdrew from the Gentile brethren, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And Paul says that even Barnabas was carried away with that sinful behavior. When I was a young man, I went off to an independent fundamental Baptist Bible college and I discovered that they have lots of rules. And there was one rule that was spelled out in all capital letters with three exclamation marks behind it. No interracial dating. 그거는 어느 다른 인종과 데이트하지 말아라라는 거예요. Now, I was not much of a Bible scholar when I was 18 years old, but even I knew that there was no 11th commandment forbidding interracial dating anywhere in the Bible. 제가 18살, 그때 18살이기 때문에 제가 18살 때 성경을 많이 하는 사람은 아니었지만 하지만 성경의 어느 구절에도 다른 인종과 데이트하지 말아라는 규정은 없다는 걸 분명히 알고 있습니다. And I even considered asking the authorities there why that rule was in the college handbook, but somebody else asked first. And I was sure by that, that guy asked the question and not me because the authorities there decided to make an example out of him for questioning their policies. 그때 학교의 담당자들이 그 질문한 그 학생을 일종의 본보기로 삼아서 학교의 학칙에 대해서 의무를 가진 걸로 해서 본보기로 삼아서 처벌했기 때문입니다. 그 학생은 그 학비는 다녔지만 다시는 다시 학교에 돌아오지 않습니다. It is part of human nature and pride to favor those from our own ethnicity. 인간의 본성과 교만의 일부는 자기와 같은 사 같은 인종을 좋아하는 것입니다. Nevertheless, according to God's message to Peter, that is a sin. 하지만 제 방금 전에 읽은 본문 말씀에서 베드로에게서 주신 주신 한 예의 메시지에 따르면 그런 인종에 대한 편견도 죄입니다. Any kind of prejudicial preferences are not derived from a study of the Bible. 사실 성경적으로 볼때 어떤 형태의 편견도 전부 다 죄입니다. The Bible teaches that there is only one race. 왜냐하면 성경에서는 오직 한 인종만 있다고 말하기 때문에. Acts chapter 17 and verse 21 says, God hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. While there is diversity of families and nations, there is only the one human race. And all those who teach otherwise should be rejected as patently unbiblical. One of the most powerful blots upon the name of Christ has been the tendency of so many professing believers to refuse fellowship with others based on differing ethnicity. 편견을 갖고 교제하기를 거부하는 것입니다. And that kind of thing will never be permitted so long as I'm pastor of Youngstown Baptist Church. 제가 이 오산 천주교의 목사이나 목사인 동안 절대로 그런 일을 우리 교회에 일어나지 않을 것입니다. I love this church. 저는 저희 교회를 사랑합니다. And I love that the members of this church are from every part of the world. 저는 우리 교회에 교회 성도 여러분 어디 이 세상에 어디에서 어떤 모두 다 사랑합니다. Now thankfully. That kind of thing has not been a serious problem in our church. Now we haven't been exempt from it, but I don't think that it has ever been a big problem. And sometimes people carry on certain behavior without ever really considering the implications of it or whether or not it's biblically justified. 많은 경우에 사람들이 어떤 일 행동할 때 그것이 성경적으로 어떤 의미가 있는지 생각하지 않고 행동하곤 합니다. Since God is no respecter of persons, 
We should not allow those who are to lead us astray. 하나님께서는 사람을 겉모습으로 판단하신 분이 아니기 때문에 우리 또한 그렇게 해야 합니다. Prejudicial fellowship is not the gospel. 편견적으로 사람들하고 만나는 것은 복음이 아닙니다. And neither are powerful feelings or particular foods. 똑같은 이유로 강력한 감정이나 특정한 음식을 먹는다고 해서 복음이 그 복음이 오는 것은 아닙니다. There's just one thing that can save you. 오직 여러분 구할 수 있는 단 하나밖에 없습니다. Jesus Christ. 그럼 오직 예수 그리스도밖에 없습니다. The Bible says, "Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved." 성경에서는 주님 누구든 간에 주님의 이름을 부르는 자는 구원받는다로 말씀하고 있습니다. Beloved, love the word of God and commit to keeping it with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. 성도 여러분 때 하나님의 말씀을 사랑하시고 하나님의 말씀을 여러분의 온 마음과 온 힘을 다해서 지키시도록 헌신하시기 바랍니다. Reject strongly that which attempts to equate the opinions and preferences of man with the glorious saving gospel of Jesus Christ. 누가 인간의 의견과 인간이 선호하는 것을 가지고 거기 예수 그리스도의 영광한 그런 구원의 복음과 동일시하는 분이 있다면 그건 거부하시고. Let's close. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for the many people here.